Hey everyone, few things before the video starts. First off, this video is intended for a general audience. It may contain some coarse language. Second of all, I do not own the rights to any of the music you hear in this video. All the music that I use in this video will be listed in the description with the original composers, their games, and maybe a link to the original video. And third, this is my first time reading off of a script that I wrote. So if you hear me fumble my words a bit, that's just because I'm not used to this. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Hey, what's up everyone? I'm the Burning Baron, but you can just call me the Baron. Today, I got a bit of a different video idea. Well, maybe not different in general. Pretty sure lots of people have done stuff like this. But considering I've only done gameplay videos at this point, it's different by this channel standards. So, as we know, E3 was held back mid-June, and as always, companies always have a lot to say and show. I think. And truth be told, I only ever tune into Nintendo's presentations. Anything the other companies do is beyond me. But that doesn't matter, because a certain game Nintendo announced is the topic of the day. Mario Party Superstars. Being one who grew up with the first three Mario Parties and is borderline addicted to nearly every installment since then, some exceptions, Mario Party is a huge deal for me. What makes this game so special? It's literally the top 100, but exactly what I hoped that game could have been. Back when the top 100 released, I dreamed of a Mario Party that would combine minigames and boards from the past and use the original gameplay as the core gameplay. I had already accepted that as a pipe dream, but here Nintendo is, granting this wish as if they popped right out of a magic lamp. Hot damn, I never would have expected that dream to come true. Mario Party Superstars is a superstar collection of five boards across the first three Mario Party titles and 100 minigames from, what I'm assuming, will be the first 10 core Mario Party titles. As of the time of writing this, around 60 minigames have been revealed, or partially revealed, and three boards have been confirmed. Today, I'm going to go over the remaining minigames and basically create a wish list of what I'd like to see in Mario Party Superstars, as well as give my hopes for the last two boards that are left. I got a few restrictions for the minigames, however. First off, while some, claim, some places claim that the Mario Party 2's Cake Factory and Mario Party 6's Catch You Letter could be in the game due to pause menu art seen during the Nintendo Treehouse demo, I won't be including those two minigames as confirmed, since I haven't ha seen any solid gameplay or actual screenshots of them. I'm going to evade that speculation. Secondly, I'm only going to talk about Mario Party's 4 through 10 in this list. The first three games already have a lot, conf lot of confirmed minigames, and I'd like to see some representation from the other games over adding to the already bloated lists of the first three. Trust me, I don't actually want to exclude them since they are my personal favorites. But maybe because of that reason, as well as the aforementioned confirmed list of them, it's better that I not include them. Give the other seven titles a chance to shine. As for what minigames I'll talk about, here's the criteria. Going with the 60 confirmed games, that leaves 40 more to talk about. So I will include 6 minigames from Mario Party's 5, 4 through 8, and 5 of them from 9 and 10. Personal preferences. As for minigame criteria, one for each category will be listed. A free-for-all, one 1v3, one 2v2, and a dual minigame. Any extra slots will be free range. Any game from those categories is viable, even if they were already in the top 100. Because let's be real, that certainly isn't a stopping point for any minigame. Obviously, if the original games lacked a category, that just opens an extra slot to talk about whatever minigame I want. That's namely for Mario Party 9, which lacked a 2v2 category and a dual category. As for the boards, well, there aren't really any rules there. Seeing as I'm only picking two boards and there is already three game restriction, my only real limit is I won't pick two boards of the same theme. You gotta get some diversity in there. Also, the two choices won't be from the same game. There's no reason to put three of the five boards from one game. Let's hope I don't jinx that one. In any case, let's start out easy and get to my board choices. So for my board options, I, it didn't take much. My two most wanted boards are Mario's Rainbow Castle from the first Mario Party and Spiny Desert from Mario Party 3. 
Mario's Rainbow Castle was the very first board I ever played, and I fell in love with it instantly. The beautiful music, for starters, sold me immediately. As for the gameplay, well, it's a race to the end of the board, and hoping Toad is the one handing out stars. Flip the tower around, and there's old Bowser waiting to ruin your day. I can only imagine how hectic a game with friends can get on that board, and that's another huge reason why I want to see this board come back. Because of all the activity Super Mario Party saw, I have little doubt that this will be a game that a lot of my friends will play with us, and I would love to see some chaos unfold with my buddies. And I feel Mario's Rainbow Castle is a simple to follow board with incredibly chaotic payoff. Makes it my number one choice. As for Spiny Desert, it's basically the same predictable reason. It's my favorite Mario Party 3 board. I love desert themed locations, and Spiny Desert has been my favorite of the game since I first played it. I'm already blessed by having my second favorite board, Woody Woods confirmed, as well as my second favorite Mario Party 2 map of Spaceland, so I guess, to some degree, I can live with neither of those boards making it in, but being a wish list, of course I'll ask for my favorites. Spiny Desert could also bring the Mirage Star gimmick back to make the board more challenging of the five. If I had to pick a few runner-up maps, they'd be Bowser's Magma Mountain from the first Mario Party, for the sake of a classic Bowser map, as well as being infuriatingly great at giving everyone a hard time. Western Land from Mario Party 2 is also a high up on my runner-up list, for actually being my favorite Mario Party 2 map. I love the Western theme, and if I got this over Spiny Desert, I wouldn't complain. Finally, Luigi's Engine Room from Mario Party. Again, I love the theme of the board, and the music fits it so well. While it is a pain to traverse, and at least two of the stars require a trip to Bowser, I could live with that if it was considered the harder board of the game. Well, I think that should do it for the boards. Let's get to the meat of this video. The mini-games. Alright, to start things off, let's talk about my six picks from Mario Party 4. I'll try to keep these sections direct and short, as to not make this too long of a video. Mario Party 4 currently has four confirmed mini-games. Book Squirm, Trace Race, Reverse a Bomb, and Bo Beach Fo Volley Folly all of which were in the top 100 as well. My personal picks would begin with Mr. Blizzard Brigade as my free-for-all choice. I won't hide the fact that music is a huge deciding factor in my minigame choices, and Twist and Shake is one of my favorite Mario Party 4 minigame themes, which is why I wanted to target at least one minigame using that theme. Mr. Blizzard's Brigade is probably my favorite to use from this theme, for be and for being an ironically heated match against those frosty flingers. My 1v3 minigame choice would probably be a returning hide-and-go boom, for being a simple, luck-based minigame that would give the solo player Bowser's Big Blast levels of tension. And hell, that would be a lot of fun! Despite being luck-based to a degree, I lo absolutely love being it for this minigame. My 2v2 minigame choice would likely be Team Treasure Trek. I love the idea of maze running, and doing it as a team for treasure hunting is a lot of fun. Now obviously, Mario Party 4 didn't have any official dual minigames, but the story mode minigames can and have easily been modified to be dual minigames, in both the original and the top 100. And I'm going to take that one step further with my dual minigame choice. I want to see Panels of Doom return. Originally, it was a minigame exclusive to Bowser's Gnarly Party that can only be played by arriving at Bowser while Mega. And it can be played as a dual minigame in the minigame mode, which means it can easily be turned into a dual minigame for superstars. I love this game a lot, and while I love the extra mode version, Panel Panic, more, this will be the next best thing. Shove two players on nine panels, then watch luck do the rest. With my four mandatory categories out of the way, let me get to my freebie picks. My first would be another re-returning game in the form of Blame It on the Crane. I always loved this minigame, the colorful capsules, the three players in being one reason, but it's also fun to be the one plucking your rivals off the conveyor belt, or duping the one player by speeding past them at just the right moment. As for my final pick, it's hard to pinpoint. I was initially going to pick bob -omb Breakers, but with Mario's Puzzle Party on the scene, I don't really think we need a second puzzle minigame with se a similar gameplay. I was also originally going to pick Cliffhangers, but with the Rumble feature being so heavy in that game, and not all the Switch controllers supporting Rumble, I'm not entirely sure how they'd smoothly integrate that game. So instead, I'm going to pick Cheap Cheap Sweep as another much needed 2v2 minigame and another solid twist and shake music pick. I'm also not wholly opposed to the game either. Fishing for Cheap Cheeps isn't that bad of an activity. 
Moving on to my Mario Party 5 choices. Five minigames are confirmed here, being Coney Island, Leaf Leap, Ice Hockey, Squared Away, and Pushy Penguins. All, once again, were also in the top 100. My free-for-all choice with this game was easy. I would love Mazed and Confused to return. Much like how music was a big choice, colors were also a huge deal for me. And the way Mazed and Confused had each colored square to represent a player, I loved it. But beyond that, I love mazes, as previously mentioned, and having one that changes every few seconds makes it challenging and fun to witness when it drives other everyone else nuts. Yes, I know the color thing will likely run with the new standard of color player color, so the diversity of colors from Mario Party 5 won't return, but that just means I can wish this minigame for the gameplay instead of that trivial detail. My 1v3 choice would likely be the returning heatstroke. Both ends of the deal are satisfying. You can either be the jerk faking the others out with fake swings, or you could be the badass who survived that jerk with the hammer. It's a win both ways. Unless you lose. My 2v2 pick would probably be Panic Pinball. Simple in concept, it gets super fun seeing your score rack up after smacking the Bowser head multiple times. It's a real rush when all those pinballs hit the scene. Dual minigame, I'll give it to Peace Out as my favorite dual minigame from Mario Party 5, and for having a puzzle themed game in dual category. For my freebie picks, I think I'll pick Pound Peril as my first. I was initially wanting this to be my first go-to dual choice, but it's also another luck-based minigame, something I just covered in Mario Party 4. Regardless, I'd still love to see it return. My second pick would go back to bringing Hotel Goomba again. It's not a hard minigame, but once you hit the f third floor, it'll get you thinking, and I like that. Mario Party 6 is the next stop, and the confirmed games, sitting at three, officially confirmed ones, are What Goes Up, Rocky Road, and Mass Meteor. Already solid, considering two are brand new returning ones. So my free-for-all pick would be Same as Lane. I love minigames where the choices of other people can indirectly and unintentionally be problematic to your own choice, and vice versa. As you can tell, I love it when games can create some chaos just for existing. My 1v3 minigame choice would be Stage Fright. While Snow Brawl was my initial pick, Snowball Summit is in the game, so there's no real point. Stage Fright puts that sorry solo player up on stage for three people to shoot. Way to put a literal meaning on the phrase. My 2v2 pick would go to Jump the Gun. It's good to have a little platforming in there, and it feels good to accomplish this game through solid teamwork. For the dual minigame, I'd like to see Boot Off Stage return. To safely move away from the luck-based games, and move more toward further tension through a horde of boosts sweeping in to take you away. On to the freebie choices, my first would be Money Belts. A cool concept, coin-collecting minigame that I really enjoy. It's not that hard either, just requires focus and a little bit of memory. And on top of that, no, no, never hurt to have a little bit of diversity in terms of the coin-collecting minigames from different games. As for my second pick, let's go with another dual choice of Light Up My Night. Stumbling around in the dark, lighting candles, it's a simple concept that takes some focus as you figure out your surroundings. Mario Party 7, which currently has three minigames confirmed. Pokey Pummel, Pogo A Go Go, and The Final Countdown, all of which were also in the top 100. So let's see if I can't bring anything new to the table. My first go-to pick for the free-for-all category would go to Ghost in the Halls. Another Haunted Mansion exploration game with faulty doors and, of course, ghosts. And again, works well with the maze idea. Easy pick. My 1v3 game choice would be La Bomba. Working with my more sadistic side, this game is almost unfair to the three players. Sure, there's three of them, but the amount of bombs the solo player can drop on them makes it hard for even CPUs on hard difficulty to win. Maybe ditch the spiked pillars for a return and you'd be even. My 2v2 game choice goes to Tile and Error. A more balanced game of Have the Most Territory, something Lightspeed did not accomplish well, but I love the claiming territory idea, and I think this game is the best one that does that. Dual choice, I'll go with Apes of Wrath. Nothing quite like a little monkey business, you know? Which can maybe be made even funnier now that Donkey Kong's an actual playable character. Going for my freebies, I actually have a few I want, but I'll start boring and ask for track and yield to return. I find something about surviving this minigame to be exhilarating, and it's satisfying to outlast everyone else, even especially considering how hard this minigame can get. As for my second pick, I'll choose World Peace, the 2v2 puzzle making game. Grab the matching pieces and match them up with your partners. Or in the case of this demo I'm playing, do it all yourself. 
I can still sense some rage when a lack of cooperation happens, and I do love some chaos. Mario Party 8. The game I have the most hopes for. After being ripped off in the top 100 and currently having no confirmed minigames, I'm seriously hoping for a redemption shot for this game. Yeah, for this game. Trust me, I'd like this list to be more than 6. But to be fair to every game, gotta start even. My free-for-all pick is simple. Shake it up. Being the being my best minigame in the game, and probably my favorite, which is probably the worst thing I can say given the original's infamous rule menu, I really want this one to return. And not just for getting the song back too. I hope to dominate in this one all over again. I guess to evade motion controls, the control change could be A button mashing. My 1v3 choice would be Snow Way Out. Not just for the punny title, but also for being that one that could easily translate to Mario Party Superstars in terms of controls. Replace motion controls for a control stick for the solo player, and you're golden. As for my 2v2, I'll give it to Paint Misbehaving. Another easy control alteration game, control stick moves, that's all you need. Other than that, another great territory claiming game, with painted Goombas instead of actual territory. Dual mini game, I'll go with Cosmic Slalom. While I would love Cardinators, Cardiators, I don't know how to pronounce that one perfectly, I'm once again trying to move away from luck based mini games. Cosmic Slalom not only gets another one of my favorite songs added as a possibility, but it's also a great substitute for Motor Rooter from Mario Party 3. A solid, racing style dual mini game. As for my freebies, well, it's tough to pick just two. And as much as I don't want to repeat another top 100 choice, I gotta ask for aim of the game again. Sure, it's a game that will likely have a predictable outcome if you know how to play it, but I still love that game regardless, and any excuse to get my favorite song in the game for another reason. As for my second freebie, I'll go with another 2v2 choice of King of the Thrill. Nothing quite like some tournament fighting styled action. Another Mario Party 8 game I really enjoy. Mario Party 9. A stark opposite to Mario Party 8, a game I actually don't care too much about. Regardless, I actually do enjoy a lot of the minigames. However, this game has a lot of restrictions, based on the lack of 2v2 and dual minigames. I won't be counting the fact that nearly every game could be counted as a dual minigame. And with only 5 picks, this makes it a smaller section. Still, same conditions. One free-for-all, one 1v3, one and three freebies. Goomba Spotting and Shell Soccer are the only confirmed games, with Shell Soccer being, I guess, being the only thing close to a 2v2 minigame. And a lot of the games I liked were not in the top 100. So let's start with my first free-for-all pick. I'm picking Launch Break. While I'm not entirely sure what they could do for the third fueling option, as button mashing is the first two, I can regretfully put bets on the control stick rotating. If not, just button mashing or something different. As for my 1v3 choice, I'll give it to Weird Wheels. It's a really interesting button input racing game that I actually really enjoy. Now, for my freebie pick, I think I'll get interesting here. And let's start interesting. My first freebie will be Womp Stomp. Boss battle minigames aren't a thing I can see returning, but given their status, they could easily be worked into free-for-all minigames, and this one is the one I love the most. Even if I can make a similar choice down the line, I really want the music for these types of games to return too. My second freebie will be Flinger Painter for sure. It's another simple yet fun minigame of claim your territory with paint. Another thing, I can see it as simple for anyone to play. And my final freebie, I think I'll give it to Player Conveyor. It's an interesting take on the maze running with conveyor belts forcing you in direction and making you really think about how to get to the goal first. Mario Party 10 is the final stop, and another game I don't really care that much about. It took a few tries for the minigames to stick, but I think I could finally find 5 to add to the two new ones. Skewer Skewery and Rapid River Race aren't bad picks to start off, honestly. For my free-for-all pick, I'll go with bob Combo. As one of the only games to stand out on my second chance of the game, it's really satisfying to see your choice throw pay off. Or to see it flop, it can be funny either way. My 1v3 choice would go to Watermelon Whalen. Smashing watermelons may seem like a waste of perfectly good watermelon, but anything to make the other three fear being near me. Satisfaction guaranteed, or you probably lost. My 2v2 choice, I'll take Goombrat Combat. These types of games can also get intense and heated, and that's the core reason I love them. 
As I've probably made clear, I'll take any game that makes things more intense. Freebie choice number one will go to Fruit Cahoots. The concept is similar to Womp Stomp and can act as a suitable replacement should boss battle minigames not be considered. But having both is still fine by me. Second freebie would be Paintball Battle. Kinda like Flinger Painter, except you're flinging paint at your rivals instead of the canvas. Let the hunt begin, am I right? Well, those are my minigame choices and my board choices. If you watched all the way through, well, thanks for watching. Let me know what kind of minigames and boards you hope to see return in this game. Who knows, maybe some of us will get our wishes. Not gonna lie, I think the only way I can be displeased with this is if Mario Party 8 gets ripped off again. I'm already getting a game I never thought would be real. I'm already as hyped as ever. Thanks for watching. If you like this type of video, and want to see me do more of these kind of wishlist videos, leave a like and let me know. If you want to see the other things I've done, consider subscribing and checking out my other videos. Hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.